Tom. Let's go to Melbourne now. Joining us is the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, good to see you as always. So the budget bottom line, it's improved by a billion dollars. Where have those savings come from? Well, the first thing to say is we've made $2.3 billion worth of new commitments during this election campaign, supporting people with diabetes, getting more people onto the concession card, helping to ensure that the co-payments for PBS medicines are reduced and, and obviously a significant announcement on the weekend about getting first home buyers into their scheme. What we've done into a home, what we've done is to offset those new financial commitments with what is called an efficiency dividend, uh, which is about banking those efficiencies that departments can find. Uh, it's a well-established practice by uh, and uh, one that has been used by both sides of the political right. divide. What does that mean, cuts? Is that fancy those... words for cuts? No, it's not. Um, all those services, whether it's health or education, disability support are actually seeing increased funding in, in the budget. What it means is that the departments themselves uh, need to find some efficiencies. And they do that already and we have an efficiency dividend um, that will be going to 2% for, for the next three years. Uh, and that is a way, again, to ensure that the taxpayer receives the benefit uh, from those departments finding efficiencies in the way they do business. So which more of these efficiency dividends would you be looking at if you win again on Saturday? Well, again, what is our plans are set out in <laughs> like the cuts, budget, I mean, I mean, which was delivered cuts, four weeks ago? Well, yeah, absolutely not. Um, what, you, what you've seen from our government is effectively a doubling in education and health spending. Um, record spending on disability support through the NDIS, where the Commonwealth is picking up two-thirds of the tab. Uh, we're seeing records in spend spending on defence and national security with a $270 billion capability plan and around $10 billion in cyber security preparedness and offensive capabilities in the last budget and a $120 billion 10-year infrastructure pipeline. What you see right across the board is we're increasing funding uh, and guaranteeing those essential services that people rely on. And we're doing so, Pete, by growing the economy, by seeing nearly two million more Australians in work than when we first came to government. And the improvement that we saw in the budget bottom line, which was over $100 billion, the fastest improvement in some 70 years, was largely driven by having more people in work and fewer people on welfare. So we, we've got the settings for the economy, well established through the budget. It's a very clear contrast to our political opponents who are hiding their costings from scrutiny, uh, who have not put one policy forward uh, to Treasury and Finance during this campaign for independent costings. We've done 35 policies and people can go to the Treasury and Finance website and see exactly how those independent bodies have assessed our our policies. They can't see it with the Labor Party. Right. And the reason why the Labor Party is not is not putting themselves forward for scrutiny is because the only way they'll fund their higher spending is through higher taxes. And under Labor you'll see higher deficits and higher debt and that will be inflationary. Well, well the government's not in any position to criticise Labor on higher debt, surely? Well, what I've just said to you is that we've actually seen a material improvement of over $100 billion in the most recent budget. We're not the party that says we'll spend $6 billion to pay people to get the jab, even though we've had the jab. Um, we're, we're not the party who said at the last election that we would increase taxes on people's super, family businesses, higher income taxes, um, a retirees tax and a housing tax. We're not the, we're not the party um, that is making hundreds of billions of dollars of aspirational and party platform commitments, but not providing that level of detail before the election. And we're not the party that is promising a new a budget straight after the election, which is what the Labor Party you, you, are doing. You, they are simply hiding from scrutiny. You, you did mention housing in, uh, in your first response there, Treasurer. Jane Hume said yesterday that there will be a bump in house prices in the short term following that home buyer's scheme. She's not wrong, is she? Well, Jane Hume's absolutely right that some people, as a result of this scheme, may bring forward their decision to purchase uh, a home. But she's also right when she said um, that the fundamental purpose of this scheme is to get more people into a, into a first home, and that is a really positive development. And it's a clear point of difference, again, with the Labor Party. They have a policy where they, ha they want the government to own half 
of someone's home. We've got a policy where we want the public to fully own yeah. their but, own home. But housing, there's more money into the market. We want to access their super, which is their money. Houses well, let's, will let's go up. the numbers on the table. H houses will go up. There'll Pete, be more people going to auctions. Houses will go up. I mean, that's, that's an easy one. Pete, Pete, let's be really clear for your viewers this morning about the facts. We have a $10 trillion housing market. Around $700 billion of residential um, housing transactions take place every year. There are 100,000 first home buyers. If they each take out the maximum $50,000 from their super to invest in their first home, that's $5 billion. $5 billion going into the market where there's $700 billion worth of transactions. You do the maths yourself. You can work out that it's not going to have a material impact. In fact, we heard just yesterday from the Property Council that it was a fairly targeted policy and that it wouldn't have that material impact inflationary impact on prices. This is a fundamental difference in approach between the Coalition and the Labor Party. We've adopted a series of supply side measures, including the downsizer contributions, reducing it down to 55 so that 1.3 million additional households can access that scheme to put more money into their super by downsizing their home. We put the Home Builder Program in place, which saw more than 130,000 people get into their, into their home. We put in place the loan guarantee scheme, the home loan guarantee scheme, which will see 20,000 first home buyers get into the scheme. We've got supply side measures, but we've also got a measure such as this, which allows people to access up to $50,000 from their super to get what is ultimately the number one asset for people in their lives. And we had a retirement income review, which was led by independent experts. And they found that when people own their own home, they have much more security in retirement. They're less likely to face financial stress and less likely to okay. live in poverty. Tra so our policy is about delivering a more secure retirement, supporting superannuation, but also importantly okay. supporting first home buyers. Treasurer, we will have to leave it there. Thanks for your time though, as always. My pleasure. These are the top stories today. The Coalition